Okay, task A1. Brogan has created a logo for her company. She has inserted her logo in the document task A1. Open task A1 and enter your details in the header. Resave task A1. So we'll go and do that now. So this is task A1 in the file. So I need to double click on the top. Now the version of Word I'm using here is 2019, but it's exactly the same in other versions as well, 2016 or even newer, it's exactly the same. So you need to put your details in the top there, it's really important, and you must put what task it is, task A1. Now you must put your details, your candidate details, on the top here, on everything you print out, because if it comes out the printer without your name on it, it's going to go in the bin, it's not going to be your work. So doing that is assigning your name it's like signing putting a signature on that so that when it comes out the printer you know it's yours so we close header and footer now we'll go back to the question it says she's not happy with her logo identify two weaknesses of the logo add these to document task a1 so two points two marks here so we'll go back to that and we'll have a look at that so it's quite an interesting looking design there I think that says party there and if we zoom in a bit more it says perfect party so what can we find here well the image is very pixelated you can actually see the pixels there I don't know if that's intentional but it doesn't look particularly great and the second one well the image isn't very clear but I'm going to steer away from the image with my second point I want it to be slightly different I'm looking at the writing it's not particularly clear so any one of those, one thing about the mark scheme is it says do not accept generic responses that do not relate specifically to the logo. So it does actually need to be, you need to be writing about the logo. The images are very clear there and it's very odd, very kind of odd colouring in there. So anything like that is going to be a great answer for that one. Two marks. So go on, down, A1B. Brogan needs a new logo. She wants you to create a logo using a sketch she has provided. Open the document logo sketch. So we'll go and open that now and have a look at that, what she wants. So this is logo sketch and we can see three balloons and what looks appears to be a string from the balloon in kind of like a curvy intertwined kind of effect there. There's no indication of colors I can see on there doesn't specifically say that we'll go back to the question paper what does it say so the logo must be fit for purpose and match sketch use different colors for each balloon include a shadow on each balloon incorporate the company name the perfect party using appropriate font color size and position six marks now this actually must must be an image so if you create this in software You've got to make sure you export it. I'm going to do this in PowerPoint, but you can save it as an image. You can save it as a PNG image, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go and load PowerPoint now. I'm going to create this logo. So here I'm in PowerPoint, new blank document, and I'm going to go and look back at the logo. So it's three balloons, and what we know is they need to be a balloon shape. They need to have three different colors, at least one balloon in front of one another, reflection on it, so kind of a shadowy effect, shadow behind at least one balloon. I think we can do that in PowerPoint. So go to insert now and shapes and we'll find suitable shapes, balloon shapes. And I quite like this one here, like a teardrop shape. To me, that's a suitable balloon shape. And I'm going to rotate it around like that. What I'll do first is I'll get the three balloons on there and I will get them into place and then I'll color them in. So I've copied and pasted that across. I've copied and pasted that one and I'm going to make this one a bit bigger. I'll be careful not to distort it like that. That one's going to be a bit bigger. So just go back and look at the design. So I'm going to have that one in the middle and the smaller one kind of goes behind that and there's a further smaller one that comes in front of the big one in the middle. So I'm going to copy and paste that again and this one needs to be placed as like so and I need to rotate it around because it needs to be 
and I'm facing that way. I'm going to move that down like that. Okay, let's go back and have a look. It doesn't need to be exact. It needs to be fairly similar, but not exact. I'm going to move that one up there, and that one comes down a bit more. So let's go and choose some colors now. So we'll have bright colors for this. So go to Shape Format. Now I'm going to choose Shape Fill, and as I do that, I also need to choose the outline, and that needs to be... I'm just going to... I'm going to go with no outline there, just because it keeps things simple. So shape fill, that one's going to be orange. This one's going to be red. And again, no outline. And this one, let's go with a nice bright green for this one. So a nice bright green color there. And again, no outline because it looks a bit odd if it's got an outline. So I've got my three balloons there. Let's go back and have a look at the diagram there like that. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my draw tool here to draw the string. So just go back and have a look at what that looks like. It's kind of very curvy and intertwined for all three of them. So as best I can, so I'm going to use a mouse for this. So I'm working on a laptop, but I'm going to use my mouse. And I'm just going to do the best I can here. Uh, don't worry if it's not perfect. As long as it kind of looks like it should do there, that's going to intertwine there. It's going to go around there. And this one, I think I'm going to have that coming across there like that. Is that approximately... Yeah, it's approximate, isn't it? What it says is curvy lines to represent string. That's curvy line to represent string. Okay, so we've got different colored balloons, three balloon shapes, that's one mark. At least two different colored balloons, that's two marks. We've got our curvy lines, that's three marks. Reflection, so at least one balloon in front of another, that's four marks. So now we need the shadow behind at least one balloon and then we need to do the logo company name now what i'm going to deal with now is a shadow behind at least one balloon so i'm going to have a look at these kind of effects so i went to here i'll shape format shape fill gradient so let's have a look at that and see what we've got here what could be good for my shadow effects there so that is kind of a shadow effect there uh, i might want to do another one with the shadow effects but i might want to just kind of experiment with this till, till I get this right, so more gradients and have a look at how this is going to work. So can have radial or linear there. That looks quite good. Radial has kind of got a shadow effect on it. So now I've gone back to shape fill and gradient and I'm having a look at this. I quite like that. And I'm going to do the same one with the orange balloon here as well. And I'm going to have gradient effect there. That looks pretty good. I think that's kind of a shadow effect that they're, they're wanting there. The only thing I need to do now is say the perfect party and we need to go back to the question. It needs to say incorporate the company name perfect party using appropriate font color size and position. So now I'm going to do that and it needs to say the perfect party. So I'm going to use word art here and I'm just going to choose a simple word art and the perfect party and I'm going to place that there so what does it say about that in the exact using appropriate color size and position so what does it say in the mark scheme fit for purpose appropriate font color size position spelt correctly the perfect party so it does need to be spelt correctly if you're not sure please refer to the exam paper so I'm pretty happy with that. That would be six marks. So what I need to do now is make that into an image. And it's really important that I do that. So I highlight that, all of that there. So right now is click group and I'm grouping them together. So I group the whole lot together. I'm not sure that groups that in there as well. So I'll just go back and do that again. So now I have grouped the whole lot together. Now the next bit is relatively easy to so click on that. The whole lot is grouped together here. So now select it here, right mouse click, and what we need to do is select save as picture. Now again, I'm using 2019. It's exactly the same as in 2016. So you need to save it as PNG in a suitable folder in your folder that you're going to hand in. And it does say here, save it as logo. So make sure that is capital L-O-G-O, -O, and we're going to save it as a PNG file. So that's 
that done. So now task A1C, answer this question on document task A1. Give two features of bitmap images. Then we're going to resave A1 as a PDF. So what are my two features of bitmap images then? Well, the first one is they're made of tiny dots called pixels. And the second point is each pixel can be edited. So done that, two marks, resave task A1. So go back and resave it. And then it said to save it as PDF. So we go to file, save as. So now I've got the option here to choose PDF. So I can choose PDF there if I want to. Or you can go to file and print. And instead of selecting print to a printer, we can select print to save as PDF there. So go ahead and save that as a PDF. That's relatively easy to do. And that is 10 marks.